Hi everybody, Bruce here. This week I'd like to present a variation of a program that I did last week called Maze Runner. That program was written in a procedural approach and this week we're going to rewrite the program in an object-oriented philosophy. This will give us a good opportunity to contrast and compare the two different approaches basically tackling the same problem. So here we see the object-oriented mouse running through the maze. It would appear exactly the same as the first program, which was the procedural approach. You can see the mouse running into dead ends and backing up as if it were executing a backtracking algorithm. But as we had spoken of before, it's not. It's simply following a right-hand rule here so that it is following the wall to its right continuously until it exits the maze. So the most obvious question that you're probably asking yourself is what are the advantages of working in the object-oriented paradigm over the procedural approach? Well, the most obvious advantage is that once you have created a class of objects, it is very easy to clone an object. You can clone it to behave exactly the same way as its predecessor or you can modify its behavior. So, what we want to do here is we want to generate a second object, a second mouse, but with this mouse it's going to follow a different set of rules. I'm going to have this mouse enter the maze down here at the bottom left, and it's going to be following what I call left-hand rules, which means it's going to be following the walls to its left. The original mouse that was running the right hand rules is going to be entering up here at the top left. The top line is obscured right now because of the cursor here but it will show up in a minute. So this mouse is going to enter up here at the top left and follow the right hand rules. Now it turns out that this mouse here actually has a somewhat shorter route to get to the exit. But What's going to happen is that this mouse entering the bottom left and this mouse entering from the top left are going to collide several times and it's going to change their route, it's going to change their strategy because they think they've run into a dead end. When they hit anything, they're going to reverse their direction and go back where they came from. So what's going to happen then is that even though this mouse at the top left look like, looks like it has an advantage, it's going to be this mouse from the bottom left that manages to get to the finish first. So let's go ahead and start it and run. Okay, we see them coming in from the two corners. Now they're going to run into each other in this area. They're going to run into each other again here. Now it's completely changed their strategy. Now what's going to happen is that this mouse here is actually the one that had entered from the bottom left is going to be able to take this outside course just following these simple outside edges and win the race. Okay, let's just take a quick look at the code here. Remember that I will send you this code if you'd like. If you would just check the description below, you will see my uh, encoded email address. If you send me an email with a description of Maze Runner, Object Oriented, or something like that, I will get this code off to you right away. I'll just cut and paste it into the body of the of the email so that you can just paste it right into your editor very easily. So let's just take a quick look at some of the changes that have been made in the code in, or in order to make it an object-oriented system. The maze is the same basically. Down here we are defining classes. So we have a class of a basic mouse which has it which direction it's pointed. It has the X position and Y position. It's in the X and Y position in the maze. And it also has a last X position, last Y position. This is so that it can go back and erase. When it moves, it can it, it knows where to erase the last mark that it left in the maze. Then once we have this generic mouse class, I have defined a right-hand mouse subclass and a left-hand mouse subclass. You notice I didn't make any differences here. The, these are both exactly the same as mouse as far as right now. The only difference is that down here when we have a function called explore, which is really the function that makes it move through the maze following 
either the left hand or the right hand rules, you see that the the uh, right hand rules are applied to the right hand mouse subtype and the left hand rules are applied to the left hand mouse. So this is the advantage here and the simplicity of the system is that we have just created a generic mouse. We have created two subclasses of the mouse which are no different than the original superclass. The only difference is that this different naming convention of these two different subclasses allows us to superposition this function explore to act differently depending on which object it's running in. So you notice that the generic function of explore just says search for exit using left or right turning rules. This is just the description and then under here you have two versions of explore and the system is perfectly happy handling these two definitions of the same name but with different objects that they're going to be operating under. So the rest of it is really uh, just generically the same behavior for both the left hand and the right hand mouse. They need to see if um, you know if there's anything to the left, is there anything to the right, if there's anything ahead of them um, and those things would be generic to both types of mice. So is it open forward? We need to know what direction that the mouse is moving in order to know where to check to see if the next space is open in the XY coordinate system. Okay, turn right, turn left, move forward, and then the rest are sort of just utilities. Get the XY data, print the maze. This is a delay so that it, it doesn't just go blindingly fast. And then here is the main driver routine. So what's kind of interesting about this is it makes it look like almost like a real-time operating system, but really what's happening is you're just looping through here and you're calling these two different objects over and over again. And the way that the rules are set up under Explore, the left hand and right hand rules are set up under Explore, is that they only take one step or one motion every time that they are called. So they can get... Um, that they, for instance, can check to see if, if it's open to the right. If it's open for the right-hand mouse, it's going to turn right and then move forward. Left-hand mouse, is it, is it open to the left? It's going to turn left and move forward. And that's all it does in one pass. That makes it possible to run a simulation of a real-time operating system or a multitasking operating system is really the more appropriate term. Um, in this system, uh, making it appear as if it is uh, has different processes running when in fact it's just a, a loop down here that's iterating on these two objects. When either one of them hits the final destination of max max on the XY coordinate system, what it does is it sets the direction um, global variable to zero and that indicates to the main loop that it's time to quit. So I've established the directions a little bit more differently in this version over the other one, and that is that one is north, so it's one, two, three, four is north, east, south, and west. Zero means stop. So again, um, if you like this code, uh, you know you can download Portico literally in two or three clicks, and you're good to go. You can paste this code in and literally within two minutes you could have this thing running. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. You take care of yourself. Bye-bye now.